For this tabletop review, I'm going to be taking a look at two items from Spikes Tactical. The first item is the um, Barking Spider 2 uh, for the AR-15, um, and the Barking Spider 2 is, is more or less a uh, uh, Krinkoff type of uh, brake design, and it carries model number SAKB0100. I'm also going to be taking a look at an optional end cap for the um, Barking Spider, and that is the Dynacomp end cap, and that's model number SAKB0101. So this is the packaging that uh, the Barking Spider comes in. Um, uh, most of Spike's products are now coming in these uh, barcoded uh, plastic bags. Um, and uh, they're uh, sealed, so I'm going to cut this open in a minute. The Barking Spider Dynacomp end cap comes in this small little plastic bag here. So let me get these out of the bag and uh, we'll take a look at the contents. All right, here's the uh, Barking Spider 2 out of the package. You can see that uh, it ships with a uh, protector um, cap on the end of it and uh, it ships with this optional flash hider. The other item I was talking about, the Dynacomp 2, it, it does not ship with this. I want to make that very clear that this Dynacomp 2 muzzle brake end cap is about $40. This assembly is about $135. So if you want all of these, you're looking at about $170, $175. It just kind of depends on where you buy them from. Um, so let's start out with um, this uh, break from Spikes Tactical. Like uh, I mentioned, um, this uh, end cap right here, which you can use or you cannot use, uh, is designed to be a flash hider. This is a four-piece uh, Krinkoff type design, which uh, has internally a cone that creates additional back pressure uh, on your rifle. And that is important on short-barreled uh, weapons or AR pistols uh, to help uh, the cycling and it deals with uh, the dwell time uh, from shorter barrels as well as uh, shorter length gas systems like the pistol length gas system. You'll also notice um, that it is pre-drilled so you could pin and weld this so uh, if you had, say, a 14 and a half inch barrel, you could pin and weld this, uh, and, I, and it would uh, bring it out to uh, over 16 inches for a legal length. So that's a nice option um, that these are pre-drilled. Um, this comes, this end cap, like I mentioned, uh, unscrews, and you can take that off. Of course, you can run it like this. Uh, but your threads would not be protected here if you decided to run it on your rifle like this. Uh, I believe this is like a glass breaker or something of that nature. If you wanted to add the flash hider, it just screws on like so. And this inner piece right here also unscrews. And we'll take that off. And now we have our internal cone assembly, which comes out. And you can see the uh, shape right here of this, uh, which aids in providing back pressure. And then, of course, uh, the inside of the Barking Spider too. Um, so this is a really nice design. So if you were to, to pin and weld this, um, the additional length that you would get from something like this would be from here to here. Uh, I'll measure that in a moment, um, but I believe this would be enough to make a 14 and a half inch barrel uh, a legal size if you pinned and welded this. You could then remove all the internal components so you can get inside of here for cleaning, so that's really good. So that's what you get with the uh, Barking Spider 2. Now, if you wanted to take the Barking Spider 2 and um, utilize it not only for added back pressure for your short barreled rifle application, uh, but to cut down on muzzle rise, 
you can purchase um, the Dynacomp uh, end cap adapter for an additional roughly forty dollars and of course if we reassemble this I'm just checking out uh, this um, just sits right in there's a, a, a recess down in the bottom and it sits right in there and then this screws back on like so and then we'd screw the Dynacomp on like so uh, I'm going to test this on a seven and a half inch uh, barreled upper uh, receiver um, once I'm, I'm ready to uh, uh, shoot that and I'm going to be testing it with the flash hider as well as the muzzle brake and hopefully I will be doing a video of that shoot with this uh, barking spider uh, on the rifle or the uh, it will be a rifle I'm waiting for a tax stamp right now Okay, so now with uh, with that said, um, let me read a little bit about the Barking Spider um, information from Spike Tactical's website. Um, don't want to read all of it. I just want to give you the most important information here. Um, obviously, it's designed to redirect the noise, the blast, and the concussion forward away from the shooter. In other words, downrange. Now, that's, that's real important when you're shooting shorter rifles with shorter barrels on it, especially if you're in an in indoor range and you have people next to you. It's very obnoxious to have someone shooting something like this right next to you, and you're getting the brunt of the... Uh, muzzle blast and the noise. So something like this basically puts everything down range. So if there's anybody around you that's that's shooting as well, they'll definitely love you for it, uh, for using this. It increases back pressure, which in return can increase the reliability in a short barrel application where dwell time has been sacrificed for barrel length. The barking spider can be used on any barrel length, but it really shines in short barrel applications. The Barking Spider can also be used to increase the back pressure for subsonic or weak ammunition. Uh, so that's good too. If for some re reason you're shooting subsonic ammunition without a, uh, a suppressor, there you go. Uh, or if you're shooting weak ammunition, um, in the case of the AR, um, you know, some of the weaker 223 stuff, um, this could be beneficial for that as well. The Barking Spider is modular in a way that it can accept multiple different end caps, attachments, and thread protectors. The modularity allows the operator to tailor the weapon system for a specific application. The front end of the Barking Spider has an integrated striking device or glass breaker with 1 and 1 8 inch wrench slots out the front, leaving the body uh, or for easy disassembly, making cleaning and maintenance a breeze. The internals come out the front, leaving the body attached to the barrel. This allows you to pin or permanently attach the body to the barrel to meet 16 inch overall length requirements, yet still be able to disassemble the muzzle device from the front. So the glass breaker is, this is what they're referring to right there. Um, if you were, if I was to use the glass breaker, uh, I would, uh, I, you know, it would be nice if, if there was a smaller thread protector to go around that. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, there, not, there isn't to my knowledge. So, let's see. Moving on. Um, the Barking Spider was designed to handle full auto and high volume fire. Uh, features a cutting edge blast cone design, which is supported in both the front and the rear. This feature, not found on any other Krinkov muzzle brake, eliminates the cone from sagging in extremely high temperatures. Um, I guess that basically means if you're running this in a full auto uh, select fire weapon, um, hey, the cone's not going to sag on you uh, under high temp situations. That's great. 
This uh, is CNC machined on a state of the uh, on state of the art equipment using the highest quality materials available. It's hundred percent made in the USA and features a lifetime warranty, which is normal for most Spikes products. The body is machined from billet forty one forty chromoly ball ball uh, bar stock. It's ball dimpled to reduce weight and to help dissipate heat. That's the uh, dimpling here, which is uh, similar to what you might see on a golf ball. Um, the body comes pre-drilled for pinning to the barrel and includes a 332nd inch hardened stainless steel pin. Well, um, hmm. You saw me open this, and um, yeah, it didn't, mine, this one did not come with a hardened steel pin, so you saw me open it, I opened it right here on my table and uh, took everything out, uh, there was no steel pin in it. Uh, you could probably use a detent pin from a lower parts kit, or you could take a stainless steel nail uh, and cut it down the size uh, if you uh, needed uh, a pin for a permanent uh, installation. The barking spider body is the correct length to make a 14 and a half inch barrel into 16 inches of overall length when permanently attached. The body is heat treated and features an extremely durable black nitride QPQ finish. The front hex end is CNC machine from billet 4140 chromoly ball or stock. It's also heat treated with a black nitride QPQ finish. The blast cone is CNC machine from billet H13 tool steel. It's also heat treated with a black nitride QPQ finish. Um, the barking spider has an eight sided hex in the rear with three quarter inch wrench slots, which allows easy timing and installation. The Barking Spider includes a thread protector which covers the teeth on the striking device when it's not in use. This eliminates the risk of sagging or damaging the threads. The Barking Spider also includes a five-prong helix flash suppressor cap which greatly reduces the flash being thrown down range. The modular design allows you to change configurations around in seconds by simply unscrewing the attachment and screwing on a different one. So the uh, outside diameter is 1.4 inches. The overall diameter assembled is 3.75 inches and the weight is 9.4 ounces. Okay, now that I've got through um, all the information that uh, Spikes provides on this, um, so what are my thoughts? Well, the nitride finish on this is excellent. The threading, the design, the machining, well, it's excellent also. There's no machining marks. Um, it's very finely done. I mean, there's a, a, a knurled uh, surface here on this thread protector for easy gripping. We have the dimpling here on the body, uh, reminiscent of a golf ball. The, um, this obviously you could use a, a, a crescent wrench on this or a standard uh, uh, muzzle device tool for installation and removal. Uh, I think pre-drilling of these types of devices, it should, it should happen on any device that you can be used to make a 14 and a half inch barrel 16 inches. It should come, they should all come pre-drilled. Um, my thoughts on that are one that this steel in itself is difficult to drill. So if you've got a titanium drill bit or a cobalt type drill bit, these, these are still hard to drill. And given that this moves around, you're going to have to clamp it in a vise. If you don't have a drill press, you're going to have to do it by hand with, with a hand drill. And if you're not careful, your drill bit can slip off of here and gouge everything up. And uh, uh, I've done that before. So um, having this stuff pre-drilled uh, is a uh, excellent idea. Um, so that's good. And of course, if you're not going to permanently attach it, the pre-drilling doesn't, doesn't affect anything. So you just 
screw it on and, and uh, you know, put some molly uh, grease on this, screw it on and torque it down and you're good to go. Again, even, even on this body piece, I mean, the threads are, are very well done. Um, there's no roughness um, putting this together, taking it apart. The cone is, is done. There's no machining marks on the cone either. Um, this whole thing is kind of oily, um, uh, which is a good thing. It's always nice to see some oil on, on it as, as a protective measure. Um, you can, of course, shoot it just like this, leaving the cone out. You could put this back on and shoot it. Um, if you, uh, well, you'd have to put this back on if you wanted to put this on or this on and leave the cone out and make a flamethrower out of it. So, I think this is another high quality product. Uh, again, um, as a tabletop review, I can just comment on what I see in the package, uh, the description, and my initial impressions by looking at it. And, and I look at a lot of things. I look at how well the threads are done, uh, the machining of the product, the, the finishing on the product, how well the parts go together, uh, the material it's constructed out of. Um, you know, a lot of love went into to building this item. And compared to some of the cheap crink off brakes that I've seen on the market, this is night and day over those. Um, the, let's see, if we set this aside just for a moment. And let's look at the Dynacomp. I, I don't have much experience with the Dynacomp muzzle brakes that Spikes uh, provides. Um, this particular one, of course, has a knurled surface right here uh, to help in, in installation and, and screwing this down, something to grip onto. It is a perfect color match. The finish is a perfect match. The same high quality craftsmanship went into um, this muzzle device. And I'm definitely uh, looking forward to uh, testing this with um, the... Uh, uh, flash hider as well as the Dynacomp and I'm, I'm hoping I can uh, do uh, um, do a live video showing each of these as, as I shoot it and my initial impressions on, on what I think on on how effective uh, both of these are so uh, in summation um, I think this is a good buy for the money depending upon what you can get get it for price wise and um, how much value this has on a 16-inch rifle. Um, you probably, my, my guess is you probably don't need it on, on if you're running a 16-inch barrel. I think this is going to come in handy uh, on your AR-15 pistols. And if you're running SBRs, you know, uh, 12, 11, 10, 7, 8-inch barrels, uh, I think that's where this device is really going to shine. I have shot a lot of uh, crink-off type a, uh, AK pistols that use these types of brakes and with the 7.762 by uh, 3.9 uh, these they work really well um, they, they do exactly what they're supposed to do and um, I suspect that um, this Spikes tactical crink off design is is going to perform um, just as well on an AR-15 so I'm going to wrap this, uh, this tabletop review up. Uh, again, stay tuned. Uh, my next shooting video um, will be, um, one of the things I'll be, I will be showcasing is this. I will be shooting this at the range. And, of course, if you want to see me do anything else while I'm shooting at the range, uh, leave me a comment about that. Uh, I'm still not exactly sure what exactly I'm going to be doing at the range to uh, make a quality video that isn't completely boring, but uh, I'm going to try and keep it as interesting as possible.